Hi, my name is Jen. Welcome to my channel. And today we're talking about stretching your creative brain, constraints, and black and white photography. This is not for a beginner. This is not for someone who's seasoned. This is for anybody. And it's good to do when you're in a funk, when you're bored, when you find that you're not shooting because you're making a lot of excuses why you shouldn't be shooting or like you're too busy or blah, 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 like whatever. Creativity thrives in constraints. I have no idea who said that, but it is truth. And creativity in a nutshell is essentially taking things that are ordinary, usual, mundane maybe, and being able to like look outside of the box, make different connections and come to solutions or pathways that are different. When we have no constraints and everything is like open to us and we can do whatever we want, we often do nothing. <laughs> So when we put a constraint in with our photographic work, it automatically narrows the path that we're going to walk. Instead of like a million pathways in front of us, our road gets smaller and smaller. It's like you have to be going down this really narrow path. What can you do to make it interesting? And we're going to talk about using the constraint today of shooting only in black and white. And I don't mean like shooting and then editing in black and white. I mean like turning your camera into black and white. You are going to see in black and white. We are going to take away color and we're going to do that to train your brain and to get you to understand what it is that is interesting, different, creative, novel, worth telling a story about in your surroundings. And I bet you'll be surprised. You're going to notice things that you don't notice on a normal day. So let's talk about black and white photography. First of all, there is a reason that black and white photography is like so magical and moody and evocative. And you feel like a part of you is like melting into the photo and like, like, I don't know how to describe it other than like melting into the photo and being in the space. I'm like looking at these old photos off camera. Maybe I'll get them that my granny took that are in black and white and they're magical. And the reason they're magical is because they show depth. They show mood. They leave a bit of us wondering about the scenario, wondering about the story because we don't have all the information. This is a photo here that my granny took on her Minolta A2, 1965. And we've got, this is my mother doing a headstand, but look at this line of light. Like when I look at this picture, what I see are shapes and lines everywhere in places that you may not notice it if it was in color. Like what I'm noticing are the lines of contrast that go down the front of her leg. And there's a line that goes on the floor that goes right to almost like guides the eye. And yes, it's from the sixties. So it feels like time warpy, right? But I bet you the photo would feel different if it was in color. And the reason for that is we don't see the world in black and white. This is what makes a photo compelling and makes you want to look at it is that it's different, that it's not what you see every day. We're like bombarded with so much sensory input. And we learn to like discern what is different and what is not shocking, but doesn't make sense. And so we look at it longer or we actually attend to it versus glossing over it. And that is what black and white photography does. Like part our brains like this, like this isn't what I normally see. So we want to look at it longer. That's why black and white photography is magical. When we take color out of the picture, that was a good one. <laughs> when we take color out of the picture, and we're only looking through the lens in black and white. A big part of what is featured in most of our photography a lot of the times is color. So when that's off the table, we have to look for other things to be interesting. And the first thing that this is going to show you immediately is lighting. You're going to find snippets of light that are high contrast, that are magical. You'll notice where lighting feels really flat and boring. And I want you to try this first is to see where your eye goes and notice what the lighting is like in those scenarios. Even just walking around with your camera in black and white mode saying, I'm going to capture the different shapes of light that I find is a phenomenal prompt to work with for a photo walk. Another thing you're going to find you notice is texture. Texture goes in hand in hand with lighting because we need lighting and contrast in order for texture to be really um, magnified and to be really, what's the word, prevalent. The other thing that you're going to notice in black and white, when we got the color off the screen, is things like shape, 
pattern and framing. Again, it's that whole, let's put a constraint. This is a task that I do for myself frequently. And I also just recommend it to people when they're feeling like they're in a creative funk. We're really good at making up excuses of why we can't get started or why we can't do our work. We often use limitations and constraints as excuses to not do things. Like we'll be like, it's too dark. The lighting is too flat. There's, I'm like stuck in a mall. Like there's nothing. I don't know when you'd be stuck in a mall, but whatever. <laughs> right? Um, we always look at these limitations and use it as an excuse for why we can't start. But I'm going to say these limitations and these constraints and these lids that you can put on the possibilities that are in front of you are actually what's going to like accelerate your ability to see things creatively and execute images that are different. It's phenomenal to do it in a place that you think is boring. Like I challenge you to do this in your house. In fact, before you even leave, because when you leave, like and you're out in the wilderness like or the suburbs wherever you live but when you're out in the world you have again lots of paths and lots of possibilities in front of you and if we're talking about constraints and limitations to force you to see things differently and creatively start in your house because I bet you you think your house is boring <laughs> or your house is a place that you've seen over and over again put your camera in black and white and give yourself 30 minutes. Again, another limit. We're going to go limits on top of limits, on top of limits, on top of limits. Take your camera 30 minutes in your house, one room. You want to get limit crazy, bring it even further down. What can you find that's interesting and how does the way you document and tell the story of that space in your home shift when you're shooting in black and white and bonus points. If you're working on a camera that has a little, like a flip screen on it, and you can turn it around. So it's like an old timey camera where you just have your viewfinder. It's gonna be even better because again, we're gonna narrow our focus. I like to say we narrow our focus to broaden our awareness. It's kind of like mindfulness. And when you're meditating, you sit there and you narrow your focus inward so that you broaden your awareness of all the stuff that's going on. When we're with our camera, if we can narrow our focus down to the viewfinder, it helps us broaden the awareness of what's in the scene. Trust me, you get really distracted with all this stuff. Like right now I'm talking to the lens, but I can see in the window, I can see the trees are moving. I've got crystals that are kind of swaying over there. I got some lights over here that are like flashing and I'm got, like, there's a lot happening. So when you narrow it down, cut down to a little pinhole, that's going to remove distractions and it's going to make it easier for you to look like a detective, you know, like the old timey detectives with the magnifying glass, like in the cartoons, it's the same thing. Okay. It's going to help you find the stuff that you're looking for. Learning to see the depth and the story and the emotion and the mood. There's so much mood in lighting. It just makes it easier. It makes it easier to see these things like contrast, light, shape, pattern, texture. For me, this is like scales for a musician. I don't know. I'm not a musician, but I assume musicians always practice scales. So like, or like stretching, stretching. If you're going to run people who run marathons, again, not a runner, but if you run a marathon, I bet you go for a jog and I bet you stretch and I bet you walk and you use your muscles so that when you go to run the marathon, you're like primed and ready to go. I went and did this this week. I went for a walk and because the lighting was beautiful. It was like super harsh. And like, how often do you say harsh lighting was beautiful, but I think harsh lighting is beautiful. So I like jetted down to the downtown area where I live. I just noticed things like I would not normally take a photo of the salt that's on the ground because like, what is salt on the sidewalk? How's that beautiful? But there was something about the way the salt was like going to this this park bench and there was so much texture in line that to me, I was like, this is really cool. Just believe me, go try it. Exercise for you to do today. This week is to boost your creativity and to train your creative eye, get your camera into black and white, give yourself a constraint, a location and an amount of time, go see what you can capture and then come on home. Do you have to share it? No, you don't have to share what you shoot. You can share it if you want to share it. I'd love if you shared it with me. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Jennifer Hulley is my handle. Give me a follow over there so we can hang out. And until next time, go kick some creative ass. Mm. Now I can finally eat my scone. I had my scone here the whole time.